if there's any part of your body that feels not right. And if that's the case, you're going to write down that body part. Not something that gives you chronic pain, but something that feels uncomfortable right now. Okay, I'm going to have a couple people, if you're willing to, share what you have on your card. And we're just going to allow the space for any of you who haven't heard anything or feel anything to still write that down. Anybody want to share with their, what came up? If it was a memory or if it was a pain? Yeah. Thanks, Carrie. Mine is um, feeling responsible for what other people have done. Like, so I, I take responsibility when I was a kid. Um, somebody stole a cookie in our family and um, I took responsibility for it even though I knew I didn't do it. And was that the specific memory that came to so your mind? That, well, actually it was a recent thing that just happened Okay. and I did the same thing again. So I asked the Holy Spirit, where did it originate? Where did that start and the memory of the cookie yeah. came up? Yeah. Okay, so something that just recently happened Yeah. and you asked the Holy Spirit, where did this where start? Did it start? Yeah. And it started with the cookie incident. Yeah. Thank you for sharing Taking that. Responsibility. Okay. And it was my heart that hurt. Yeah. It was your heart. My that, heart that so hurt. So your heart that hurt also. That's yeah. you also had a physical. Yeah, I, I saw my heart. Just, yeah, and I, I could feel it. You yeah. can feel it's it right like, now. Ouch! That that hurts. That's a lot of things in my life that mm -hmm. is connected to that. That's connected to that. Yeah. Wow! Thank you for sharing. Does somebody else want to share? How many wish you had that much clarity? Okay. okay, so let's pray for that. Okay? Lord, you know, I don't know how this is going to go, and it's totally up to you, Holy Spirit. But I'm going to call forth clarity. I'm going to call forth the confidence that you want to do this with every single one of us. But it's up to you to actually make it happen, not up to us. We can't make ourselves hear, hear, feel, or perceive anything. Only you can do that. So we let go of the responsibility to hear, or to feel, or to see, or perceive anything. And I lay that responsibility just with you, God, that it's up to you to reveal this thing. If there's a few of you that still don't have anything yet, I would like for you to consider an emotion that you felt this week multiple times that you did not like. Maybe it's an emotion that's become a part of your life every day. You don't even know how to live without this emotion. Did anybody of you get that? Now, if you have that emotion, we're going to ask you, Holy Spirit, to reveal a place where that began. Anybody have questions at this point? Or go, I 
have something I want to share or something I, I can't get anything yet. So anyone want to comment? It's kind of fun, right? Super vulnerable. <laughs> Super intimate with God. Woo! Okay. So does anybody want to share anything at this point? Yeah, thanks Heather. Dark and in. I don't know why I'm sharing. <laughs> Yay, good. Um, I put, I mean, there's, this week has been like most weeks, and I struggle with disappointment and fear and hopelessness and hurt. And um, when you ask to go back to see, to, you know, where it stemmed from, it's from my earliest memory. And a picture came into my head when I was in, a, in, in my crib and my mom was 25 when she had me. My parents weren't married and there's a period just where I just felt kind of unwanted and I remember that feeling even in a crib. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's kind of depressing but... <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. But I've never had that vision before. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, we've um, yesterday, me and Anne and a couple of us hung out, and just Anne had this really, really clear picture of me as a child too, and the way she's describing me, it was just like I have to explore more of that because I feel like that is such a lens that it affects everything in my life. Mm -hmm. So. Um, anyway, one more note, and I don't know if I've said this before, but I went on this um, week-long intensive just about relationship disorders, and they were talking about your child and your core wound and everything, and we were supposed to give a name to our child, mm -hmm. and I picked Zoe Girl, <sighs> and so that's so special because I didn't know what it meant until you had said that. Oh my God! And my dad was going to name me Zoe, but oh. my mom wanted to name me Heather, but... Um, I always, um, wow. that is just really cool. That, That's really cool. Yeah. So wow. I'm caring for Zoe Girl. I'm learning too. Yeah. That's amazing. I think on that note, for any of you who don't, you know, you're kind of going, I don't know quite how to do this. I'm not really quite sure how to engage in all of this. Um, I'm going to see if this doesn't fit for you. Um, you were just talking about feeling experiences, disappointments and hurts. Um, so many people in our lives disappoint us and hurt us because they're operating out of a grid, you know, that's less than. My mom couldn't imagine that I needed glasses. And that impacted my life in a really profound way and caused me to live a very isolated existence and a challenged academic experience for three years that were really pivotal. And I can't change what happened during that time, but the Lord can change the impact of what happened during that time. But you currently have people in your life who are not giving you what you deserve because they can't imagine being that person. Yeah, they can't imagine being the person that you deserve them to be. So that may be an invitation from the Lord today for you to do that. A disappointment or hurt with someone who cannot imagine being what you actually need them to be. And that impacts us so much. So now we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to actually do that magical thing that we cannot do for ourselves. I mean, we're winging it here with the Holy Spirit, and I just love when God does this, right? So um, I would like to come and lay hands on some people. So I'm just going to invite everyone to close your eyes, and if you would prefer to not have anyone touch you, would you just raise your hand so I know that? I may not lay hands on everyone, 
Um, but if you prefer not to be touched, I totally get it, and that would be weird, you know, so I don't want to touch anyone, but if I feel led with the Holy Spirit to do that, if you, so just let me know now, just raise your hand and I'll not do that. Okay, so everyone is apparently okay with being touched, so I'm going to just pray, and we're just going to have a space, and I'm actually going to, Jocelyn, is there a song that you could put on that you think might work, or you could even just sing with the Lord? with us in a moment and if you feel led we're going to take like five minutes to just be with the Holy Spirit to just breathe and let God shift this space Carrie talked about she could feel the heart the pain in her heart so here's what we're going to do I want you to um, take the picture of the memory or the pain that you're actually feeling in your body or the image that you have of not having needs met by a person and Lord we're actually aware of this because you brought this to us you brought this up to us we didn't even know to bring this up to you so we just thank you for bringing this up to us And we release the decision that we made that we didn't even know that we made we just release this and we release this part of our body to you and we release this experience to you for you to show us what you want to show us and we allow you and invite you into this organ to exchange the hurt and the wound for healing I'm just gonna let you talk to God and we're just gonna have a moment like this
in this place that our mind may or may not even have an awareness of that God is singing over touching and moving and shifting Lord we allow our mind to catch up with what you have just done with us and done in us and Jesus you are actually already alive in us in this way and have been waiting permission to awaken us here we say yes for the flood of energy the flood of your joy the flood of your life Christ in us and that we may be fully awakened and alive I speak and I agree with the healing and the intention of heaven over every single physical area that each of you saw. I speak and release with Christ the healing over each and every memory that each of you saw. I speak and I release the angelic host of heaven in each of the um, spaces as God continues to do the work in your life. To bring you into the awareness of who you really are. Amen. Anybody want to share? So I saw um, I saw an angel with a basket coming to each of my memories and picking them up like a seed or like a ball and then planting it in the ground and it coming up as a flower. Hmm. That's a great image. I think I'll be blessed enough to borrow that. <laughs> That's great. Okay, anyone else? Did anybody experience anything physically change with something that they had felt physically before and then did that shift for anyone? Yeah, do you, do you want to? Yeah, my heart doesn't hurt as much, um, and he's given me a different perspective. Already? Yeah, of, of oh. I don't have to take responsibility like that. Not just, like, emotionally, that's what kills my heart, is taking responsibility for things that he, he's never required me to take responsibility for. That's wow. what I said. Yeah. So. Wow. I know there's huge. more deep work on that, but that's just, yeah. It's a yeah, good, that's what you're aware yeah, It it's is, really and it's powerful. You yeah. know, we don't have to know everything he's yeah. doing. Thank God. But as, right? <laughs> yeah. But as he starts to let us know, you know, and we become aware, and sometimes we'll find ourselves even surprised. Yeah. Um, this isn't a new thing. You know, this is something that God's been doing with me. It's kind of along the line of agreements, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have the guts to do it with the group. Um, you know, until today. And um, it's astonishing how we just find ourselves different. Um, and that's what we're trying to do, is not do the trying thing, <laughs> but doing the awakening and being shifted. So good. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, we can continue to practice this, you know, as we lay our own hands with Jesus, like on your heart and we just continue to just allow the Lord to shift and make us aware of and what we do is release that thought or idea to Him and the Holy Spirit literally changes it. What's so astonishing is that our brains also change, will rewire with that healing. It's astounding. 
Okay, did anyone else want to share? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, a couple of things I've found and, and what I experienced like a week ago. Yeah, was, would you tell us more about that? that. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things I've found is is often with the the memories of the hurt. Um, there's a there's someone else involved. Um, that you know we are hurt. Typically, we're hurt by somebody. Um, you know, occasionally it's something, but I'd say 99% of the time it's it's somebody. Um, and two things I've found that kind of I guess unlock that that release and the freedom is is first of all to forgive the person that you know the perpetrator if you want to call them mm -hmm. that the person that 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 caused the hurt in our lives um i find that is the yeah that is one of the biggest keys is mm -hmm. it is extending forgiveness to that person for what it was that they did mm -hmm. and, you know releasing and blessing them um and then the other thing um i find i sometimes need to do is is then in in that moment where I experienced that thing, I made, you know, I made decisions, and and basically agreed with um, a lie that had been kind of mm -hmm. planted in my heart. And so the other, you know, the other area of forgiveness I find is is just to ask God's forgiveness to say, hey, you know, I agreed with something that's not what you say. Mm -hmm. And I've lived in agreement with that until now. Please, please forgive me. Um, and those, I've found those two things are, you know, enormous key. So in the case of what I experienced last weekend, um, I think there was actually some sort of, you know, a, a spiritual attachment mm -hmm. that had to be broken off. But before that could happen, um, you know, I had to uh, kind of like what we did here, have a have a uh, an understanding of what it was that was going. You know what what happened to me? Why did I why did I think I was not worthy? What was mm -hmm. what was the lesson that had been taught to me by circumstance, or right. by someone's action? You know, in this case, it was you know just the way my parents brought me up. Um, yeah, um, and so so I you know forgave them for um, you know their sort of neglect of me mm -hmm. um, and in so doing was able to then extend you know forgive them and then I could you know extend compassion to them because then I saw sort of beyond beyond my own pain mm -hmm. was able to see well that was how they were brought up they were just mm -hmm. you know they were just doing what they knew um, but that was yeah yeah that was the uh, yeah and then once having forgiven them for that then mm -hmm. There was this other other step of, of breaking off a spiritual kind of attachment that mm -hmm. had, had grown up around that that right. experience. That's so, so good. Yeah. That's huge. It's such a huge change in life. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. Well, before you start, Josh, I'm going to just say one thing, and that um, just because I'm my mind's kind of processing with the Lord and what you're saying, and um, I just want to encourage you. So many of us have a lot of teaching on forgiveness, and um, some of that's totally the Lord, and some of it's not. So we don't have to go into it with our understanding of what forgiveness is. Just let the Holy Spirit lead you in that, because it can sometimes be a whole new thing. Even that teaching can be an issue. So if you don't have any level of forgiveness and you can't access it, but the Lord's bringing it up, I just want to encourage you that just releasing the situation to Him can move you in a beautiful direction and you can have the conversation of forgiveness, you know, um, at another time, in, you know, and sometimes just releasing it to him is enough to get you to another place of, of being able to move further along. So I just want to encourage you in that, like, um, y you may not feel like you can do that, and then you feel stuck, like, oh gosh, now it's on me, and that's not what he's doing. He's going, if you'll just release this situation to me, I'll take it to the next step. But some of you are already ready to do a forgiveness step, and, and then that also is huge and hugely significant. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Thanks. That's so helpful, and it's so right on. So, yay! Okay. Yeah. What? That helped me as well. That helps you? Too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I went with like 10, 15 uh, Christian friends to Sedona yesterday and stuff, and I noticed I was feeling very ostracized and judged by them 
that mm -hmm. came up earlier. And then the Spirit showed me that my brother, he took his life a couple years ago. It's more like euthanism and stuff. That's been difficult. But growing up, um, I, I was shown that he was jealous of me because he felt that I was favored for by my mom because I was the younger brother. So I think, like looking back, he... You just he, realized this? Yeah, just now. Just now. Yeah. Wow. That, that he like ostracized and, and kind of judged me because he felt like frustrated, you know? Mm -hmm. And then so I guess I've been like trying to communicate or connect with others with that energy, not even being aware. And then some people would think that I think that I'm better than them because of that. But that like, I'm not thinking that way myself at all. I'm like, where is this coming from? Yes, those energies in our lives, but we're not mentally aware that that's how we're coming across. And my brother could have just so been good. perceiving that. It could not have even been true about my mom with me and my brother too, for all I know, you know? That's yeah, so that's huge. That's so huge. Wow. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Okay, does anybody else want to share? Yeah. Yep, we're wrapping up. Um, Anybody else have something they want to share? We're good. Kids are good and we're all good to share. We have a few more minutes. Anybody go, that was super frustrating and I wish it was better? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yep, okay. So we're going to do that with the Lord. We're going to have that be better. I mean, sometimes things are just click, 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 and sometimes it's like, I saw nothing, heard nothing, and that's not on us. That's on the Lord. So, that didn't have anything to do with willingness or desire or anything. It just, sometimes that's what happens. Um, mine was really interesting. I immediately, as I started to pray with everyone about feeling a pain, I felt a pain in my lower back that I didn't feel at all before that. And now as I'm starting to talk about it, I feel it again, <laughs> interestingly enough. I asked the Lord, um, where did this begin? And I saw myself in the womb. I asked him what it had to do with, and he said it had to do with the emotion of feeling unworthy. So um, I don't even know what that means. But I'm going to spend some time with the Lord this week and, um, and pray and see what he wants to unravel in that and how he wants to switch and change that. Did anybody have any other experiences that they want to share? Almost. Good job. Thanks for singing over us, Jocelyn, with the Holy Spirit. That was really beautiful. I've been waiting for when you and the Lord might get a chance to do that, and it was today. Yay! Okay, so no other thoughts and comments? Okay, then we'll invite kids back in. We can hang out and visit, and I think we have a few goodies. Is, is that right? Do we? Maybe? We'll have something. We have something here. And um, I just... I want to encourage you before you go to take a moment and look someone in the eye and share something. Something. Doesn't have to be anything big. Just share something. Um, I can be more specific because that's really hard, right? Um, no, that's no, good enough. Okay. That's Don't good be enough. more specific. Okay, good. Okay. Because then you're going to box me into some place I don't want to be. Box you into some place you don't want to be? Okay. Ex thank you. The way I can tell my stories. That's excellent. Did you have anything you want to share about this practice? Was it good? Was it Not hard? Yet. Was it? Okay. Not yet. Okay. Yay. Thanks for being adventurous. And um, keep a little notebook because things may happen this week and you have no idea what the Lord might be doing. Yeah. Are you going to share kids in? Yes, thank you. So we're going to invite kids in and we will do our final, yeah. So can somebody grab kids? Is that okay? And we'll bring them back in. Genevieve's been I should have had people sharing door. while the kids were Every few minutes going, there. really? Really? No, she wasn't. She was once. She was. Yeah. I just remember really, like, so, like, even this morning I woke up at 11, 11. I see them on the I know. I don't know if it's the, like, the one that keeps. I see it all the time. That and 144. <laughs> it's, not, it's 
seriously, then I'm like tripping out. So I see it all the time and I'm to the point where I ignore it on purpose to be obedient to God because I don't know if it's of God or... Well, did you yeah, ask the Lord? What did he say? I did. And one time at church at Gateway, I felt like he said, yeah, that's of me. But I've been learning to hear him clearly. And then other times I feel like I'm not supposed to look into that. Maybe it's kind of like... Money is not evil, but the love of money. So maybe it's just like... Right, not get too lot. overly concerned, just, but it's... Yeah. I think it is from God for sure. It's always 144 and 1111, like the 144,000 revelations. And then like 1111. It's weird though, because I see it so much, like all the time. Well, it's burdensome that much. You know? Really? That you see it all the time? But just because I don't know right. what it is. So here's the really fun thing in living life with God and having an adventure with God. I don't know if this, this, is, this is what I can say so far, which is that so many times he opens up a conversation and then we land in conclusions that we didn't even know we landed in before we even had the under, you know, before we even had start the conversation started. So I am learning to take more time in beginning to the conversation. So if he keeps showing you this number, if it, then he wants to have a conversation and I would say, put the whole thing on a table. Just, put the, just give him the whole thing. You don't need to resist it, and you don't need to figure it out. Just go, well, this is really fun. You're having a conversation with me. You're connecting with me. Now, what does this mean? And I have had conversations started that he didn't answer and let me know what it was about for quite a long time. So it was really funny how that, I mean, it was a really long time. And then there are others that I've known right away. But I would say that most of my answers when the Lord's doing something numerically or is not... Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right. So I pay attention to, okay, how do I feel when I land in this conclusion? Yeah, and if my, if how I feel when I hear that conclusion is filled with peace and encouragement and empowerment, then I know it's the Lord talking to me. If it feels discombobulating, like I gotta look this up, I gotta figure this out, then I know that that's not the Lord. It doesn't mean that the initial is not the Lord. It means that there's a little bit of contention on a conversation that God actually wants to have with you. And you get to build the muscles of going, I'm not going to listen to anything that isn't filled with peace and empowerment and joy and kindness and gentleness. So I'm going to keep the door open to the Lord bringing this number to me, but I don't have to get freaked out about it and I don't have to figure it out. That's the joy. Yeah, and just, yeah, just, it'll either disappear and it won't keep, or, or he'll do it and then he'll let you know what it is. And it'll be in such a peaceful, joyful, empowering, and usually super simple thing. I've discovered that he gets super simple with me and it doesn't even have to do with like figuring out the meanings of things. It has to do with the unfolding of joy and life and goodness. That's just... Okay. Yeah. I see one, two, three, four all the time. All the time. Like for years. Oh. And I love it. And it's hilarious. And so I just ask God why he, he, what, 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 what is that? And he goes, you just like it. And it's funny. And I think it's funny. And you like it. When did you like, find that out? Okay. I literally ask him right now when you Just were now when yeah. we were talking? Yeah. And he told you. So it you. could be literally like, ah! he just wants to humor you. and He goes, I just you know you like it. To, yeah, Jason and I, I'm like, one, two, three, four. And he's like, ha ha. And today he did it. Today he said it to me. And I was like, I, I just love seeing it. And I never, ever try to see it. Ever try to see it. Right. And, and I only have one chance today because I'm asleep at the other time. Right. At the 12. Oh, isn't that funny? Midnight time. And yeah. he just told you now why you see it, and it's because you love it. Because I love it. And he just loves to do that. And uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> see how simple and fun and joyful that is? Because you love it, and I love to do that because you love it. That's the coolness. Okay. Um, I would love to know who did the art. Here? I don't think those kids are in They're here. not in here yet. Okay. I'm thinking it's Genevieve and Elliot, I'm but I'm not even sure. I'm thinking it is, too. Elliot and who? Oh, Eleanor. Okay. So I'm going to release. 